Hi, welcome to my video. Um, on this one, what I want to discuss is an unbalanced Y connected load. And these are just all going to be a resistive, unbalanced resistive load. So I've got a bunch of other videos discussing balanced loads, which I encourage you to check out. But basically what we're going to talk about here is all of these resistors are going to have the same power factor, but we're going to say that they have a different impedance or a different resistive value. So I'm going to assign uh, five ohms, 10 ohms, and 15 ohms to these resistors. And then I'm going to take those, I'm going to connect them up in Y like this, and then I'm going to connect them up to a Y source. And then just for the sake of our discussion here, we'll call this one phase A, this one phase B, and this one phase C. So now what I've done, and now what I've got here is I've got my three phase Y connected unbalanced load, and I've got my phasor diagram. And I've already started the phasor diagram. I've plotted all my uh, phase voltages and my line voltages. So I know I've given a 12208 volt source down here. That's my phase voltages and they're 120 degrees apart. Then I've got my line voltages, right? And keeping in mind, line voltage equals phase voltage times square root of three. And line voltage leads my phase voltage by 30 degrees. So that's how I kind of plotted all of these phasers. Now what I want to start discussing is I want to start discussing current. All right, so let's start with phase A. So my current in phase A. Well, I'm going to just use Ohm's law in this case. I'm going to say the current in phase A, and I'm going to go, you know, I equals the phase voltage divided by the resistance in the phase. So in this case, I'm going to go 120 volts. That's my phase voltage divided by five ohms, and that's going to give me 24 amps. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing for phase B and phase C. 120 volts divided by 10 ohms gives me a B phase current of 12 amps. And in C phase, 120 volts divided by 15 ohms is going to give me C phase current of 8 amps. So I figured out my current in each phase. Now the trick is to figure out where and what is the relationship between the current and the voltage in each phase. So let's jump back to phase A. So with a resistor, we know that current is in phase with the voltage. So because I used my phase voltage of 120 at zero degrees to get my 24 amps, my current is going to be in phase with that, which means this is also going to be at zero degrees. Okay, and now I'm going to plot that onto my phasor diagram over here. So I'm going to go like this. Um, right there, IA is in phase with the voltage across phase A. Now phase B, same thing. We have a resistor, which means my current is in phase with my voltage. So I had 12 amps and it's going to be in phase with the voltage. Well, the B phase voltage is at 240, which means that this is also going to be at 240 degrees. So I come over here and I plot that. Now, this one here was uh, 24 amps. This one is 12 amps. It's going to be about half the length. And I should have done a different scale, but that's okay. I, B. And then I, C, I'm going to do the same thing uh, across phase C, sorry. I use my C phase voltage, 120, divided by my 15 ohms, gave me 8 amps and that is in phase with the voltage. So that's gonna be at 120 degrees. So I punch that in up here, I C. Now those are my three currents and they're all in phase with the voltages that created them. Which brings me to my next step. In a Y system with unbalanced loads, we require that neutral conductor. And flowing on that neutral is what we call the unbalanced load. So in an unbalanced Y load, you need a neutral and it is going to carry the unbalanced current. It's also going to maintain the system voltages. 
Without that neutral, it wouldn't be 120, 120, 120. They'd be all over the place and it would be very dependent upon the load. So because we have that neutral conductor, which you know back at the source is grounded, right? It's connected to ground. We maintain those voltages. What I want to do now is I want to calculate the neutral current. So the trick with calculating the neutral current, and this is something we got to remember, is that I neutral, I'm going to equals IA plus IB plus IC. Now, what we end up doing is I end up taking these phasors, 24 amps at zero, plus 12 amps at 240, plus eight amps at 120, and I put them into an HV chart, and I add up all the horizontals, and I add up all the verticals, and that looks something like this. Now, I take that chart and I take that information. I've got a positive 14 as my horizontal and a negative 3.072 as my vertical, which tells me that when I go back to my phasor diagram, that's going to be down over and then down. Now, I use those two numbers. I do Pythagorean's theorem and I end up with a neutral current. And that neutral current, as we can see, is 14 0.3 amps. And now that 14.3 amps, like I said, we go over and then down, right? We end up being 12.4 amps below that zero mark, which puts us at 347.6 degrees. So let's put that onto our phasor diagram and take a look. So I come over here, my neutral current we said was going to be 14 amps right about there, I neutral. So now that's just the same as taking these three phasors and adding them up, going IA plus IB, moving that over here, plus IC, moving that down here, takes me back up to where that neutral current is. Um, so thanks a lot for watching, just a super quick explanation on kind of everything in an unbalanced circuit. In this one we were dealing with resistive loads, so they were all in phase, but you can definitely be dealing with loads that are not in phase with the current, but the process lays out the exact same. Uh, thanks for watching. Check out a bunch of other videos in the description below for different Y calculations or Y circuits, uh, and have an awesome day.